Locked On Senators, your daily podcast on the Ottawa Senators. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome inside episode 399 of the Locked On Senators podcast. I'm Ross Levitan on the outskirts of enemy territory in Winnipeg, Manitoba, alongside Brandon Pillar out in Tofino. And the road to 107-0 is over. The Senators shut out 4-0 by the Toronto Maple Leafs on home ice. And the irony, the only team who didn't get shut out all of last season finally gets to play in front of their fans and cannot score a goal. Pilsy and I will dissect that loss, give a, a pair of Sen Central standouts, although hesitantly, as it was a pretty poor team effort all around. So after that, we'll return to our organizational value rankings, and we're going with number four and three. It's an obvious top tier, but how do they rank? We'll let you know. This is the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day. Today is Thursday, September 30th, and Pilsy, I've been up all night trying to think of one, one positive from last night's game. Well, I mean, if you ask DJ Smith, it doesn't take him long to point out the positives of his boy, Parker Kelly, so that's uh, if you're looking for something there, but yeah, it didn't... Uh... We were pretty stoked about this matchup of rosters. We really thought Ottawa had the stronger roster, and obviously the effort level wasn't there. Like, that's not the Ottawa Senators hockey that we've been no. accustomed to, the effort level. And DJ Smith knows it, right? And he, he was pretty blunt about it when they asked him about, oh, what do you think of the special teams? They're both bad. Like, what, what else is there? Like, that's just the truth. I mean, anytime a guy who I've never really even heard of and Michael Bunting gets a natural hat trick all on the power play, yeah, your special teams probably were pretty bad. They were awful. And I don't know, did Brady's negotiation strength just rise from that? The p fact the power play was bad was shocking. Uh, just, you know, they had Timmy. He got a couple good looks. And we'll get into how he looked with his uh, new center, Chris Tierney. But I want to touch on what you mentioned with the penalty kill and how they were just so bad. And the surprising part, and when you look at the rosters, Nick Paul's there. Uh, Chris Tierney, who got some great penalty killing time last year. He's there. Connor Brown's there. And Gord Miller's calling the game, right? He even tweeted out before. He said, the last time I called a hockey game, it was uh, given gold. It was Chris, Chris. It was Connor Brown to Nick Paul. And next thing you know, Canada, bingo, bango, bongo, wins the world championships. But not the case last night. And it was over by the, the that second goal. was so deflating. And the shots on goal were just so in favor of the Toronto Maple Leafs and you know 15 to 5 in the second period so it was 12 to 1 in the second period against Winnipeg as well right so you're looking at two preseason games and you've been outshot 27 to 6 that's not good <laughs> that so what is it about the second period it can't just be the long change I, I don't know like it's it's hard to really pinpoint and especially over two games why the second period specifically they're just kind of collapsing here so they got to figure that out. Uh, they've got another preseason game. Montreal's up next, right? So they'll get a different opponent here. So hopefully that can help things out. But you can't have second periods where you fall apart that drastically. Like maybe you can you can dip and uh, maybe it's not your best period. But like you said, getting out shot that heavily is just absolutely unacceptable. Yeah. So tomorrow at home, Montreal, and then they head nice. to Montreal on Saturday. And I found it interesting that DJ Smith yesterday said that the rosters for the first four preseason games so the ones that we just mentioned the ones that have happened were predetermined so i wouldn't read too too much into those lineups however there's three games after that back home against toronto on monday then there's three days off and i think that's really where the final cuts will happen nothing confirmed yet but those last two preseason games on october 7th and 9th you got to think you're going to want to have as close to your nhl roster as you're going to have. But that being said, let's head back and, and recap a little bit further. Last night's game, there's, you know, some rough stuff here and there, as to be expected when the Sens and the Leafs meet up. No full-on fights, but a few misconducts towards the end of the game. The shift to Sturber. Scott Sabern was trying to go with Wayne Simmons all night, and I can only imagine Wayne Simmons just saying, buddy, I've been in the league 15 years. You're not even worth my time. 
You you were you replaced me for one game last year when I was injured. That's all. But that being said, you know, at least a little bit of fight at the end of the game looked good. What would you think of Zach Sanford's first appearance as an Ottawa Senator? He got lots of ice time, over five minutes on the power play, almost two minutes shorthanded, and played 18.30 overall. Yeah, he definitely had an impact, and he was given opportunities to uh, to be out there. But, yeah, kind of a disappointing stat sheet, though, when I'm looking at it. No shots, no hits, no blocks. He did have two takeaways, though. So, I mean, I guess that's uh, that's not terrible, but... Fairly quiet night for a new guy, but also you got to consider it takes time. You're you're moving to a new country. You got new teammates. You got to get settled. All this kind of stuff. The chemistry, the coaches. Uh, so it's it's very common that your first game you're not going to pop off the page here. Yeah, you know what really stood out to me about his game, and we were warned of this before. And Thomas Welsh from Locked On Blues told us the same. But when you see six four and a guy who can skate pretty well, he's moving. No physicality. Like there were a few opportunities where he could have closed out his guy along the boards and he just had no interest in doing it. It was just stick check. So I don't know if we just traded Logan Brown for the winger version of Logan Brown with maybe a bit more speed, maybe a little less hands, but not the most impressive debut, albeit those, I don't want to call them excuses, but those reasons that you mentioned, we'll see how the next game or two goes if you're Zach Sanford. Now, on defense was another area where we were really looking closely with the shutdown pair of Michael Delzato and Nikita Zaitsev. How'd you find their game? Yeah, this was a new look at our shutdown style pair, Ross. And, you know, it, it was a tough play that last goal. Like, it, Michael Delzato's following Hosang behind the net. You know, he's on his guy. And then Zaitsev makes a quick decision like, okay, Delzato's chasing him to the other side, so I'll cut him off on the other side. And then Hosang does the old uh, switcheroo and then just sends it right back the other way where none of them are looking. I think Chris Tierney was out in front too. Everybody bit on that yeah. wraparound. And, got, like... That's a moment where I understand the thinking. You want to be aggressive and you want to cut off that wraparound. But there can't be three of you all going to the same side of the net to try to cut that wraparound. And then Michael Bunting's like, I've already scored two power play goals and I'm left wide open in front of the net. And he just rips it top shelf. Poor Sogard. That's a tough way to uh, to get introduced to that game. But I wasn't too impressed with them on that play. But I think, again, it's preseason. This is a new pair, so we'll see how it goes. And also, just uh, talking about Sanford, too, man, it's tough for him to have a good performance when the rest of the team plays like that, right? Like oh, if the yeah. rest of the team is clicking, then you can kind of think he can seamlessly transition. But when when this is the effort that the team gives, it's hard for you to kind of be a hero and have a good game when you're just trying to figure out uh, the style of play and what you're tr- supposed to be doing at any given time. If it wasn't the Delzato and Zaitsev pair, Eric Branch from a guy who did get a lot of power play opportunity as well. Not quite as much as MDZ, but hmm. he was still out there for over four minutes on the power play. However, that first goal against, he just couldn't get the puck out of the zone. That's one of those situations where less is more for Eric yeah. Branstrom. He doesn't have to you know, stick handle through three guys and then break out of the zone, just chip it off the glass and out. He couldn't do that. Bingo, bango. And next thing you know, it's in the back of the net. So, uh, Branstrom, maybe not the best performance for him. Lassie Thompson left the game in the second period. And another injury was uh, Clark Bishop. Clark Bishop. And, and that was not a good look. He was going in, closing off his check behind the Toronto net. And as he finished, his knee did not look like it bent in a direction a knee is supposed to go. He left, did not return. So we'll wait today for updates. We're recording just after 10 a.m. Eastern time. So um, DJ Smith will speak to the media a little later on. Today, I'm not quite sure of the practice schedule, but whenever we find out, we'll let you know at Send Central on Twitter. Okay, a little more to break down from last night's game, but first, a word from one of our great sponsors, Bet Online. Bet Online is the online sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network, and they are a great friend for a long time. And because we have such a great relationship with them, We're giving you a 50% welcome bonus. That's right. 50% of whatever your first deposit is, we give you automatically in your account that you can use as free play to get in on the action. The Senators, underdogs all the time. Last night as well. So even though they didn't win, it was worth sprinkling just a little bit on that, especially when you saw the roster. So right now, Ottawa is one, well, I guess you could say the worst roster is 2-0 between both games. Uh, against their opposition so 
preseason, you never know, is the moral of the story. And that's why when you think you might have an inside scoop, head over to betonline.ag and get in on the action. Again, that's promo code locked on. Promo code locked on gets you 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. It's Bet Online, your online sports book experts. And Ross, if you want to stay in the action, get in the action with betonline.ag. But you got to watch the games if you want to bet on them. That makes it so much better. So the best way to do that is to get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. No more juggling, juggling all those remotes. You're not going to be confused about passwords, logins, which, like, do I got to sign into my PlayStation to do this? Which HDMI do I have this one plugged into? How do I get there with inputs? None of that garbage. Stick to Direct TV Stream. It brings your live TV, your on demand favorites, all together like never before. So you can catch your sports, you can catch your favorite movies, get some popcorn going, and some TV shows all together in one convenient place. No more juggling remotes. No need to buy another device ever again. And the best part is there's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter. Get rid of the confusion, guys, and get your TV together with Direct TV Stream. You can learn more at directtv.com. Compatible device required. Contents vary by package. Check it out today, guys. Direct TV Stream at directtv.com. All right, Pilsy, back to the 4 nothing loss at the hands of the Toronto Maple Leafs Yay. when the Senators were outshot 32-19. to 19. Philly franchise got the first two periods. He allowed three goals on 25 shots. And then Mad Sogard, as you mentioned, or described rather, that fourth goal was the only goal he allowed on seven shots. But... A lot of the attention was to that top line. Tim Stutzla making his first ever preseason NHL game after yep. last year. Well, his preseason last year was the World Juniors. Um, yeah. But that being said, his first preseason game with the Ottawa Senators. And he hit the post. He looked good. He was dazzling. He had a nice little hands in the shootout. How about Dax going three for three with guys he told us what they would do in the shootout. Cause he goes, he's like, Timmy's going to try to dangle and go five hole. And that's exactly what he tried to do in the shootout. And if you're uh, looking around saying what? Uh, yeah. Just like on Sunday, they had a shootout, even though this yeah. game was out of reach. So maybe the sense didn't get shut out because Connor Brown did score in yeah, the we'll shootout. So the puck did go in the net <laughs> for the Ottawa senators, but those two guys were centered by Chris Tierney. I'll start with the positive. 63% in the face-off circle. That's a good number. But it was the exact worry we had when it came to Chris Tierney. The pace was not up to 18 and 28. He just can't keep up. And that's why this fit is not going to last or shouldn't last. Yeah, I don't think it'll last either, but especially because we've seen this, right? Like we've seen, I don't know if uh, Connor Brown was with Tim Stutzel when Tierney was uh, centering them near the start of the season, but we saw Chris Tierney and Tim Stutzel before and it didn't really work. I mean, yeah, like you said, shout out Chris Tierney at getting uh, good faceoff percentages. That's clutch, but you can't be that far up the lineup with two of the most impactful players. Like we're talking about the third overall pick, a franchise offensive scoring winger. And then the guy that led the team in goals last year, like this line needs to create offense and you can't have a guy that's one, two steps behind the play and can't keep things going here. So I don't know how long that's going to last. Hopefully we see more of Shane Pinto moving along forward here. I'm still very confident he ends up being the second line center. Maybe not right away. Maybe we, we have another Derek step on situation Honestly, where he has to play himself out of a job. If you put Derek Stepan's Jersey on Chris Tierney, I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference by the way they play. Yeah, didn't Chris Tierney get a delay of game penalty too? Or someone yeah. did. No, um, uh, Ostapchuk had one off the face off. Yeah, uh, off, that's off the tough. Face off. Tierney got, and they were calling it both sides. Uh, the refs are, are told to crack down on cross-checking, but there was no flow in last night's game. It was just penalty, penalty, penalty. It was, at, especially in the second period, five minor penalties. And then, yeah. yeah, they had the misconducts at the end of the game, but five more minor penalties in the third period. So there, there was just absolutely no flow to this game. Uh, Send Central standouts time. And 
I'm going to go with Josh Brown. Like our boy, Laleem's Martian was in the building and he just mentioned this guy's an absolute beast out there. And his start to last year leaves a lot to be desired, but this team was high on him when they brought him in saying, quote, he was just scratching the surface. And again, maybe it takes a little time for the guy to get comfortable, but I thought he was the best defenseman on the Ottawa Senators last night. Again, very low bar, but he's my central standout. Hey, and that's great for Josh Brown. Like he, we saw how he finished off the season last year, and he's a guy that is going to be looking for an opportunity. That bottom pair defense uh, pair is there's an open spot there, really. Like someone needs to claim it and grab it. And I think Josh Brown, it'd be good to get that physicality, that big size that he has, especially if he ends up with Victor Mete again. So good on Brownie having a good preseason game. I'm sure DJ Smith will keep that one in the back of his mind. Yeah, no question. <laughs> I, I would be confident in saying right now he will be in the opening night lineup. And I'm really nervous about how that decor is going to look on opening night. I'm I'm not going to, you know, sidestep that one by any means. And yeah, you just have no idea what's going on in goal with Matt Murray, right? We haven't seen him even dress for a game yet. Those last two have to be his games, though. Right, yep. the seventh and, and full ninth. games. You can't full games. Yeah, as close to the NHL roster yep. as you can. Now, great story. Or do you have a Sen Central standout before we move on to uh, the Sen's newest signing, uh, a Chuck? But before we get to that, do you have a standout? Or I mean, there's not much to pick from. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to pick one. Um, T- Timmy had a good game. That's that's where I was going to go. Yeah, Timmy had a couple good shots. Like you said, he hit the post there, but. Again, <clears throat> excuse me, that line, um, it just struggled to get going. And Connor Brown, I thought, very uncharacteristic. He had a couple of kind of bad giveaways. Like, mm-hmm. they were on the power play entering the zone, and he tossed over the weakest backhand pass right across the blue line. And the Leafs just scooped it up and head the other way. I think it was a two-on-one the other way. Like, that's not the Connor Brown we're used to seeing. So I, I wasn't too impressed there. But Tim Slitza, obviously the most uh, offensively talented guy on this roster tonight. And he had a couple decent looks. So, I mean, we don't have a lot to pick from here. So we'll give it to Timmy. What did I text you yesterday during the day? Man, I was so tired on a drive to, to Fino from Nanaimo. The roads close. It's raining. There's no service. I get out of service and I get a text from Ross. Chuck signed. And... No offense to Zach Ostop, Chuck. Like, I'm stoked that he signed and I was anticipating a signing, but I really, I thought you were talking about Brady and I started losing my mind refreshing Twitter. And I was like, there's no way this happened. Otherwise, it'd be all over the place. And I was like, oh, Chuck, Ostop, Chuck. All right. Yes. But hey, congrats, Zach Ostop, Chuck. And uh, man, this this guy is really shining as, as uh, a great pick for the Senators in the 2021 draft. So I'm stoked the Sen signed him and uh, welcome, Chuck. A certain analyst of the draft did go out of his way in his recap saying i don't believe the senators picked a single nhl player on day two of the draft and now two months later they've already got one signed which is doesn't mean he's made the nhl but he's a step closer and that's uh yeah yep. two months after the draft so stay on your heels scotty and uh we'll be in touch down the road <laughs> On that, no question. But Zach Austin, Chuck, I don't think he had the best game last night. That face-off penalty is kind of weird. They dropped the puck. He's battling for it. He he did touch it with his glove, but mm. like four seconds after the puck was dropped. Like, I guess it has to leave that direct vicinity. Yeah, I guess so. And I mean, the refs, I think, are really trying to crack down on the face-off stuff. Like, they don't want to, they don't want to get embarrassed by that kind of stuff or right. have like one player like touches it with his hand and then next face off the opposing centerman is like, well, if, if he got away with it, I'm trying that. And then right, the line right. just keeps moving farther and farther. So I think the refs are going to be very clear on the face off violations uh, this season, but that is a really annoying penalty to have happen. And especially um, I'm, I'm trying to look at the penalty uh, results here, but didn't he just get another penalty or like yeah. it was back to back penalties for all step truck, like two minutes apart, like, well, he was out of the penalty box for uh, 22 seconds. <laughs> yeah, that's, so that's tough. But I mean, hey, you got that NHL contract in your back pocket. You don't have to worry too much about it. I would not be surprised if he's the next casualty of training camp. Like, look, you, you had a great week and a half, kid. You, you look good at the rookie tournament. You look really good at the rookie tournament. Then he gets his contract. He gets signed. He's the last CHL player from this draft class. So among Carson Latimer, Ben Roger and uh, Chandler Romeo to play a game. So he gets his game in, but the Vancouver Giants have already started preseason. Like, go down there, make an impact, be a leader, and then 
you know, the, the team's going to be watching. Could he be a dark horse to get an invite? Not saying he's going to make the team, but to get an invite to Team Canada uh, at the World Junior this year. Who knows? Maybe that's a step too far, but a great start to the season would certainly help his cause. So congratulations to Zach Ostapchuk for being the first member of the 2021 Senators draft class to sign an NHL contract. Speaking of contracts, one of the guys coming up on today's organizational value rankings, actually both need contracts um, one way or another. We're going to get to that, but first a word from our great friends at Rock Auto. It's rockauto.com, a family business that's been serving auto parts to customers online for 20 years. One, two, three, four, five, all the way to 20. They've got the seal of longevity, and you can go to rockauto.com and see all the auto and body parts available for your truck. You can get engine control modules, brake parts, tail lamps, motor oil, even new carpet. You get it? They have everything. rockauto.com catalog is unique and remarkably easy to navigate Quickly see all the parts available for your vehicle and choose the brands, specifications, and even the prices you prefer. But let's stick on that last part because the prices at rockauto.com are always reliably low and the same for professionals and do-it-yourselfers. Rhetorical question time. Why spend up to twice as much for the same parts? Don't do it. Go to rockauto.com instead and see all the parts available for your car or truck. All we ask is that you put locked on locked on in their how did you hear about us box that way they know that we sent you amazing selection reliably low prices all the parts your car will ever need visit rockauto.com and tell them locked on sent you all right pilsy we've been working our way up to this moment it is the send central top four of the organizational value rankings now if you're just joining us i'm going to pull up the on if you're watching on youtube so again a reason to watch on youtube this was the first level that we did so we've been counting down all the way from number 59 where it was scott sabarin and you keep going up and up and if you're watching on youtube we're not going to name a list off every single name here but we do have eight tiers of players so we worked through tier eight, we worked through tier seven, we worked through tier six, and then tier five I'm pulling up right now. Tier four is where it really got interesting. Roby Arventi was our cutoff at tier three. So that being said, we've worked all the way up and now I'm pulling up from 17 all the way to number five. And to recap the top 10, I think that's a fair place to start. Alex Formanton was number 10. Shane Pinto was at nine. Connor Brown at number eight. And that was the end of tier three. Then in tier two, it was a small tier. I think that this is a very, very good, but not quite elite tier. And that's Eric Brandstrom at seven, Drake Batherson at six, and Josh Norris at five. All right, Pilsy, the administrative stuff out of the way. Coming in at number four. Number four on our organizational value rankings. It's Jake Sanderson. Why? Well, I mean, Jake Sanderson, this is a guy who, much like most Ottawa Center draft picks, people said this is a reach. He shouldn't have taken him this far. He doesn't have the offensive capability. And you know what? Jake Sanderson, he just quietly goes about his business. He knows his game. He knows what he can do. He's at North Dakota, one of the best places for a defensive prospect to be. Brad Berry, an amazing coach for him. And he just continues to prove the doubters wrong. Like all those people that said that he reached, I think they've changed their tune. All of them. Like of it them. seems like all of them are now fully willing to accept that he's probably the best defensive prospect not in the NHL yet. I mean, you, you could argue uh, Maurice Sider, uh, Bowen Byer. Oh, you look that's at, about it. That's about it. But like if you mention that Jake Sanderson is the best um, defenseman not in the NHL, you can have that discussion. Right. Like he's in that air. So that's incredible if you're Sens fans knowing that he's right there waiting. But you made a good point, Ross. And it, it's kind of scary to think that he's still he's, he's not signed, which isn't a, isn't a problem. But it is funny to know that our guys at uh, four and three today not <laughs> signed. Like, man, that's all right. Here we go again. But uh, yeah, Jake Sanderson, we had him on the show. Great kid to great compete back. level. Oh, yeah. He'll be back on the show for sure. And it just seems like. He's someone that 
is a quiet leader. Like I feel like guys like Clevin, guys like Pinto, JBD, all those guys, they they know he can lead without having to, I, I don't think at least that he's a guy that's getting up in the locker room and giving a raw, raw speech and smashing stuff and yelling and screaming, right? Like I think he's someone that's like, we're going to stay calm. We're going to stay composed and we're going to play our game. And that's what he's able to do. And it's, it's such a treat to watch Jake Sanderson. Like those, um, the YouTube video that Mitch Brown did from uh, EP Ringside, and we had him on to talk about it. If you haven't watched that yet, go watch it. If you're unconvinced of how good Jake Sanderson is, all the little plays that Mitch points out that we don't even we don't even really fully appreciate because he's just doing them all the time. But when you look at them in con- in concession and watching them, it's incredible what he's able to do at any given moment to create an amazing play. Hobie Baker watch is well underway. Big time for yep. this season and to piggyback off of your point about his leadership ability jake sanderson this season as a sophomore will be the fourth ever sophomore at the university of north dakota to wear a letter that's 32 years the previous three wow. dave Hackstall, who then went on to become the head coach at und and then ended up now as the head coach of the seattle kraken yep. jonathan taves and Peace. brock besser that, that's a that's a pretty good list, and it omits guys like Zach Parisi and TJ Oshie, guys who had great careers. But the trajectory of this guy, whenever there was a part of his game that wasn't up to the level that a top 10 pick would expect, all of a sudden he fixes it, right? He's, he's not good enough at transition. All of a sudden now he's the best transition defenseman outside the NHL. He can't play in the offensive end. Now he's cycling the zone. How many times do we see that with North Dakota where he just gets the puck on the half wall, does a whole lap behind the net, evades checks, stick checks, body checks, you name it. He's any, then the best part is then they say, Oh, but he doesn't have the offensive upside. Well, now he's not only using his skating as a tool to get around the offensive zone. He's using it to set up passing lanes in Mitch Brown's video. How many fake shots and then deception he's finding guys back door, the vision the control of the play, his skating, everything has this perfect combination that allows him to be such an elite defenseman. This guy is a treat to watch. He's going to be a fan favorite the moment he steps on the ice in Ottawa. But before that, he's got a title to chase right now. North Dakota depleted from last year. You saw that week where it was like, oh, he signed here, he signed here, he signed there. They're basically half their team turned pro. But that's going to allow Jake Sanderson even more runway matt kierstead a guy who in college yeah kids will get good ice time but you're always behind the seniors and the juniors right it's just a respect thing it's a work your way to get to that level kierstead's gone nobody will be more important to their team success in college hockey than jake sanderson and pilsey he's up to the challenge this guy is going to be just fine and what part of his game does he need to work on because if you tell him all of a sudden that's going to become a, an asset to what he brings to the table. I got nothing for what he needs to work on. Honestly, like I can't really pinpoint, like obviously he's not a perfect player and he's not ready for the NHL just quite yet. And uh, some, um, some more development at Nodak will be good for him, but I don't really have like one specific glaring area where it's like, I got to see Jake Sanderson do better here. Now, uh, definitely go back. Like I was talking about Mitch Brown. He gives a good answer of what he wants to see Jake Sanderson go, uh, go through in this final year of college to get ready for the NHL. But I think like you were talking about uh, his ability to transition and deception and find those passing lanes, the best example to, for someone who's trying to understand what Jake Sanderson can do in one highlight, I forget who they were playing, but, he, Jake Sanderson starts with the puck in his own zone. Classic. He's the guy that's going to bring the puck up the ice. The All the players on the ice are just watching him, anticipating what's he, what is he going to do. He weaves through every single defender trying to get there. Then, like you said, he heads to that half wall. The puck's in the half wall. He's in the corner. There's two players on him, and he has the awareness to do a quick shoulder check. All right, who's coming? Where's someone available? And he backhands it from the corner all the way to the other side of the far blue of the blue line. There's no one there. You're like, what is Jake Sanderson doing? He's clearing the puck out of his own zone. And then in skates, I think it was Ethan Frisch. Uh, he just skates right into that pass. Wrist shot from the blue line scores. And it's just like, that was a nothing play that you were able to distract the entire team. Take the puck up ice by yourself. Get stuck in the corner. Still battle that puck. 
have the awareness to find someone coming from the bench, skating into the blue line, hit him with a backhand pass going all the way from the corner to the blue line, and it worked out perfectly. Like, that's a play that you can't even really, like, script in time. And he's doing it in real time and uh, while he's getting um, covered in the corner. Like, his ability to be able to do that, to read the ice, to make those quick stick handling moves just to stall for a second, half a second, to prevent the other team from stripping the puck from him is incredible. I, it's it's going to be the Jake Sanderson show this year uh, in the NCAA, especially NCHC. Like he, like you said, he is going to dominate and no player will have a bigger impact than he will in my mind. And Sens fans, buckle up because he will play games for the Ottawa Senators this yeah. year. I'll go out and say it confidently just based on our conversation with him as well. Like this year... He wants to experience college normally, as, as normal as it can get, compared to last year. Yeah. And then he's ready to turn pro. And that kid is not even taking a sniff in Belleville. Not even. He's not even going to wear that B on his jersey for a practice. That guy <laughs> is right to the NHL, probably right to a top four role. And just yep. to go back to Brad Slossman, that we respect him a lot. He's a two-time guest of the show, which makes him a friend of the show, even though he probably doesn't even remember us. But that being said... <laughs> He went on record after that five overtime game in March and said in the 17 years he's been covering North Dakota, that's the best player he's ever seen. And again, that's Breezy. That's that's Taves. That's Oshie. Like, there are some unbelievable talents. Brock Besser, guys who have been through that program. So Jake Sanderson stays at number four right where he was last year on our organizational value rankings. And man, the, the sky's the limit for Jake Sanderson. Now, uh, if you haven't seen the list all the way from 59 all the way to number five, because we blacked out four through one, and you're just listening, and again, Locked On Senators available anywhere you get your podcasts, including on YouTube. And we appreciate you making Locked On Senators your first listen of the day when it comes to Ottawa Senators coverage. Now, that being said, our Twitter account, Send Central, we put out the screenshot of those rankings. So if you're listening, when you get home, head over on Twitter and just put at Send Central Organizational in the search bar and it'll come right up for you as we move on to number three on our organizational value rankings. And a lot of the people who replied, because we asked, where would you rank one through four? A lot of people had this guy higher. I'll go out and say the contract did play a role with his spot at number three. And Laleem's Marsh, we'll get to that in a second. But coming in at number three, it's Brady Kachuk, the franchise. And it's wild to call the franchise a guy who's third on this list, but he's unsigned. Who knows? Like if he signs a one or two year deal, he probably stays right in this position. If it's long term, it would be pretty easy to slide this guy up because he brings the entire package and more. This is just frankly a guy you win with. Absolutely. And yeah, that's the thing. Like before uh, you guys get mad at lists and stuff, we, we need to say like, if Brady Kachuk has the contract we want, he's, he's, he's number one. Like he, this is the most important person in this franchise. However, without a contract and without us knowing what that contract is going to look like length dollar amount, it's hard to really keep him on that top spot because you have two other guys who I'm sure most people have clued in who are the top two by now that, you know, one's locked up long term, one's going to be coming off an entry level deal soon. So those guys with their contract situations are just kind of in a better spot right now, because who knows how this Brady Kachuk contract is going to go. But he is the face of the franchise. It's that simple to say this. If he's not the next captain of the Ottawa Senators, someone has made a mistake. And and the fans will let you know that pretty quickly. And Brady Kachuk, maybe he doesn't put up the points of an elite first line uh, left winger, but He's consistent. He hasn't had any injury uh, struggles so far, which is incredible for a guy that plays the top style of game he plays, eh? And it made me nervous because, remember, he got hurt in one of his first games. I believe he missed the start of the season. Or did he yeah, play because he didn't game? come till Boston. Yeah, as as a rookie, as in his first season. So I was like, oh my god, he plays such a rambunctious style. This guy is going to be in and out of the infirmary his entire yeah. career. But then look at him, man. He's just he's just such a strength of this team and he's taking his bumps and bruises. It's not that it's not that he's staying out of the fire. It's that, well, I'm sure a little bit of luck plays a toll in it as well, but 
Also, this guy keeps his body in peak condition. That's why I'm like I'm worried about the fact that this is drawing on and on and the signing bonus talk and just give Brady the bag. Like it's it's that simple. But he's going to be prepared. He's skating right now in Michigan with Quinn Hughes and Elias yep. Patterson. So a little <laughs> internal competition. I'm sure the Michigan University kids who are going to be a wagon this year, they're like, oh my God, I need to be that good to be in the NHL. It's like, no, those guys are all like really good for that level too. Yeah. But hey, uh, imagine, yeah, like Matty Beneers with uh, Kent Johnson and Brady Kachuk skating down <laughs> in practice. Uh, anyways, yeah, but no Dak for life. So forget it, Michigan. Although – it's going to be fun to watch them this year. But Brady, hopefully he's not skating with them for too much longer because the Senators need him in the lineup. Uh, we can't go through a Brady Kachuk segment without asking, are you inching closer to the panic button? De- like, yeah, definitely. Tomorrow's like, it, October. That's the thing. Like, man, we keep I keep trying to move the goalposts farther and farther. <laughs> but, but at some point, I got to smash that button. And I just, I can't, Ross, in my heart, in my soul, I cannot picture us at the home opener, packed barn. They're playing the Leafs, and Brady Kachuk is not there. I refuse. They're, they're going to get dominated that. if that's the case. I'll, it's I'll just go and like say it. I will not bet the money line if Brady's not in the lineup. Mark it down, man. Like I'll like bet the them on the reverse. We, I'll, yeah, I'll <laughs> bet on the go. reverse puck line. <laughs> hey, that worked out well for me uh, last year. Uh, that was that was my move. But uh, yeah, like. If Brady Kachuk's there, like the whole thing's thrown off. And you got to think too, obviously Brady wasn't the type of player that would be in last night's preseason game. But if a guy like him is in that game, that second period, he's dragging that team into the battle and saying, this, like, this is not the Ottawa centers that we are. Like, we need to get involved. He's getting physical. He's pissing other players off. He's creating chances in front. Like, he's the kind of guy that can pull you out of a slump where you're like, we're just, we're, we're not clicking. Like, we're not, we're not at the pace we want. That's when you need a leader like Brady Kachuk to be like, all right, you guys are slacking. I'll ramp it up here. I'm really going to get going. He's going to get, as he's skating by the bench, chirping the Leafs bench, you know, just just trying to get some sort of spark going. And that's why Brady Kachuk is so important to this team because everyone kind of falls in line after him, which is funny to say for such a young player. But that's the way it is. And like you said, the the sense they got to get this done because – I can't handle it if he's not at the season opener. Oh, my God. He holds the credibility of the organization in the palm of his hand. It's as simple as that. You look at what he brings on the ice, off the ice. He's just the the consummate professional. And I'm sick of this narrative that people are starting to turn on him, saying he's spoiled or, or all that. Like, no. No, garbage. It's, it's millionaires versus billionaires. Who are you siding with, right? And, but, and, like, I don't even think it's so much about the money as it is the principle, right? Like, no. that's the thing. Like, Brady doesn't want to sit there and be like, well, like, my my dad knew to stick up for what he he thought he was worth. My brother did that, too. And what, I'm just going to kind of give the Sands a bone here and take whatever contract they give him? No, that's that's not the kind of guy he is. And you, you should want that. You, you like, if you, that's the kind of guy he is off the ice, and that's the kind of self-respect and, like, kind of acknowledgement of his worth he has. That's what you want. You don't want a guy just being like, ah, whatever, let's just get it done, right? Like, so this is a guy that cares. He wants to get a proper deal so he can stay in Ottawa and uh, get this done. And there's not a there's not a second where I'm thinking, oh, wow, Brady's just being selfish now. That hasn't even crossed my mind. No. So people people that are in that mindset, I, I don't know what to tell you because I don't, I don't think Brady's that kind of person at all. And I think he's doing it for all the right reasons. And if you've seen what the Ottawa Senators have offered the franchise players in the past, we can probably get a good idea of why Brady is feeling frustrated and why he's holding out here. So, yeah, no blame to Brady at all here. That being said, should he sign a contract eight by eight? You know what? Let's let's bump it so that it's even more. If he signs eight by 8.5, our boy Lilims Martian posed this question to us in, in our group chat yesterday. How high does he slide on this list? He's number one. Yeah. He's number one. If you get him locked up at eight years, anything under, and like this is a biased sense fan, obviously, anything under 10 million, I would be okay with. Is Brady Kachuk a nine and a half million dollar player right now? No, not really. But like you got to get him locked in. And you, the you only gotta... wingers, the only wingers making nine and a half or more are Kucherov, Stone, Marner, and Kane. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. And Jamie and Ben and Jamie Ben. I'm fully aware of how crazy that probably sounds for people that aren't Sens fans, but like they don't understand what it's like 
to watch every player you love and watch an entire core of a team that went was one goal away from the Stanley Cup Finals, and they would have won that Stanley Cup too. So let's just say one goal away from winning a Stanley Cup and watching all those key players just drift off into the distance and get dealt and no contracts being renegotiated. Like, that's why just... Sign him for whatever you need to, whatever he wants. I'm sure he doesn't want more than 10 million, so that's fine. And just get him locked up for eight years. Like if you if you can look at your cap friendly and you've got Thomas Shabbat for more than six years, you've got Drake Batherson for six years, you've got Brady Kachuk for more than six years, and then that just helps out. You got some big negotiations coming up too. Norris is next year. Formanton's next year. Stutzler's in in two seasons. Brandy's like if you can, next year too, but I don't. Yeah, know what's Brandy. Going that's a that. big one too. But if you can get Brady locked in, that makes it a hell of a lot easier for these guys to be like, you know what? I I don't need to hold out for an extra five hundred thousand or whatever. This is going to be an amazing team. I love the culture of this team. Brady's going to be the leader here for eight more years. Sign me up. Yeah, and that's what we hope will happen. Of course, if anything breaks throughout the day, we hope this ages poorly because it would mean that Brady <laughs> has signed on the dotted line, but we'll keep you up to date on Twitter at Sens Central. All right, Pilsy. So we've got number four, Jake Sanderson, number three, Brady Kachuk, and on tomorrow's show, a milestone episode, number yep. 400 for us. Here with Locked On Senators, that's a lot, hey? That's a lot of episodes. Like I know we talk about it all the time, but it really is wild how many episodes we did without an Ottawa Senators game day. Like two, one seventy-five or something. It's something like that, yeah. So yeah. for like that's that's like half of our show was talking about uh, NHL hockey team that was not playing NHL hockey. So we can't thank the world. listeners enough. For, yeah, for, honestly, for sticking honestly. along and growing with us throughout that. And uh, we did just hit our third out of fourth requirement to monetize the YouTube page. And we really would like to do that sooner than later. So if you please subscribe, that's the one thing we just need is, is a few more subscribers and we'll be right there bringing you the best daily content when it comes to the Ottawa Senators. All right, for today, we say goodbye for Brandon Piller. I'm Ross Levitan. This has been the Locked On Senators podcast, your team every day.